Good morning, folks. We've got key stories to hit today on climate, the galaxy, recent nearby Nova, and we've got that special video on those topics ready for you tonight. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day brought the large southern coronal hole extension. It's trans-equatorial, and it's a beast. No further eruptive behavior from the sun, but those eruptions we saw yesterday are a bit easier to see on satellite, and the endless spiral is updated. So let's first see the eruption, first one heading north, but the second is behind the central blocking disk on Soho, heading right at us. On stereo with Earth off to the right, you can see the first one go up and the trailing plasma releases happening along the equatorial zone. That's what's coming our way. Enlil Spiral shows impact Sunday night. While it's not major, there are coronal hole streams to mix with and we just saw a weak impact cause big storms, so we'll certainly be monitoring the data tomorrow quick look over to India where models disagree about the track of the cyclone forming off the coast. One model has it taking on their western coastlines while the other has it shifting further west and then north to impact the Middle East. We'll see over the coming days. Up next, a quick climate change note. It is delaying the arrival of the cicadas. Come on, that's funny. Heading over to the new way half-blind climate scientists look at the sun. From TSI to TSIS. The idea is that you get to look at different wavelengths of irradiance now, not just the total. And while this is an excellent step towards identifying the greater impact of EUV and X-rays via their ionospheric excitement, it's still just about light. And when you get a massive sunspot group pounding you with flares and CMEs, it shows up in the climate data as a drop in solar energy because they don't factor the particles or magnetic field couplings. It is the greatest of all failures in climate attribution models, which you can learn more about in our climate playlist linked right below the video. The Atacama Cosmology Telescope has delivered the best observations of the magnetism in the galactic center. The diagonal fields that dominate every view before have given way to the vertical north-south central jet we can see the wavy torus around the central jet as well, and we also notice the plasma shell around the torus, fatter on the sides. That's an Easter egg for veteran viewers of electromagnetic and plasma theories. Those fat bits are like the circles on either side of the stick man. Now from the galactic system to the recent nearby nova, it was just a few days ago we shared this one backing off the supernova, trying to explain it with a smaller nova event. We still argued their kilonova would have destroyed the Earth, but the solar micronova would not. And today we see another in that same vein, also saying it's less likely to be a supernova. Folks, these are the key aspects of tonight's special video. The character of the galactic system, what it does to the sun, and the evidence that it is our sun capping the crescendo on the 12,000 year cycle. And we'll go over a lot of that detail this evening. See you back here around 4 p.m. Eastern for that special video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.